नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन फॉर द टेंथ वीक ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन वर्क सिस्टम डिजाइन सो टुडे आई थिंक वी आर ट्राइंग टू कंक्लूड द टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू वर्क मेजरमेंट एंड इन द नेक्स्ट टू वीक अवर फोकस वुड बी ऑन अदर टॉपिक्स सच एज अर्गोनॉमिक्स विच इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट वेन वी डिजाइन द वर्क सिस्टम सो वट वी हैव कवर्ड टिल नाउ let us revise as today being the last session for week number 10 we have covered the basic aspect of productivity we have aspect we have studied causes of low productivity productivity improvement techniques productivity measurement techniques and then we have taken few examples of calculating the productivity also we have seen that how the productivity can be improved what are the important techniques that can be used in the techniques we have seen that method study and work measurement are two important techniques that can help us to improve the productivity of an organization in method study again we have covered the different topics such as the outline process chart the flow process chart flow diagram simo chart thurbligs principles of motion economy and we have tried to develop a better method of doing the job and we have taken number of examples in which it was shown that if we are able to graphically represent the whole process or the system or the sequence of activities we can very easily identify that how the things can be done in a better manner whether there are operations which are redundant whether there are certain operations which we can combine or also we can see that better methods are always possible if we use our common sense if we use the graphical tools that are a topic or that are uh, developed under the method study so basically we have now understood that how we can analyze the work and how we can combine the operations eliminate the operations or maybe sometimes improve the operations improve the sequence of operations and develop a better method of doing the job once we know that the better method has been developed we have to find out that how much time an experienced worker will take to perform the task using the developed method using the standard protocol using the standard sequence of activities which have been developed as a part or as a as a output of the method study so once we have a standard method we will use the standard method a able bodied worker a worker who is skillful enough to do that task a worker who is experienced enough to do the particular task how he will perform that task so that is important so if it is a physical task we have to look for a able bodied person who can perform that physical task so worker is also important the work and how the work is to be done that is also important and then we have to find out that how much time it will take to perform that task so that is the background and when we have to calculate that how much time will be taken by a worker to perform the task at a defined level of performance in that case we have to understand certain techniques and in that line only we have already studied the most common technique that is the stopwatch type of time study after that we have covered the topic of work sampling after that we came to predetermined motion time system and in the previous session we have covered the basic aspect of synthetic data also so depending upon the situation we can very easily decide that which particular tools tool or technique or method we must use to find out the standard time for performing that task and we have seen certain examples also and try to find out the number of observations required to work sample the time required for performing that task so all this background we have now today is the concluding session for the overall module of work measurement so as you remember in the very beginning in the introductory video or in the promo video of this course i have divided the course into four important modules so the module number 1 was related to productivity measurement then the module 2 was related to method study module 3 is related to work measurement and the module 4 is related to ergonomic and other important aspects of work system design 
so module 3 we are going to complete today which is the work measurement and the last part although this re requires a very very exhaustive uh, discussion these topics are very very important but seeing the time constraint we will try to maybe introduce the concept of MTM and most to all of you. So, let us see now what is the basic definition of MTM. So, you can just have this definition just read this definition we have already covered this in one of our previous slides. Now, what is MTM? Uh, MTM or method time measurement is a procedure which analyzes any manual operation or method. So, what we are analyzing? We are analyzing any manual operation or method into the basic motions. Now, for example, if uh, when I started this session today, I was uh, not holding anything. Now, once I started to deliver the talk and I am starting to use this console, I have picked up the uh, pen and started to make a mark here. So, these are the basic motions that we analyze, we can analyze using MTM technique. So, or the MTM procedure. So, it is a procedure which analyzes any manual operation or method into its basic motion required to perform it and basic motions required to perform it and assigns to each motion a predetermined time. So, MTM is maybe uh, falls under the predetermined motion time system PMTS. So, here predetermined time is very very important which is determined by the nature of the motion and the conditions under which it is made. So, basically there are three things in this definition. First thing is the work that work can be a manual operation or a method which is divided into the basic motion. So, there is a work being done. The second is it is required the work has to be uh, done in order to complete a job. We need to find out the time required for performing this work and for that we have some data predetermined time standard which is already available with us. So, we will use that data to set the time for the standard time for performing this task which is a manual operation. So, once again I have divided the definition into different sentences. So, in order to understand it in a better manner let me read this definition for all of you. What is MTM? It is a procedure which analyzes any manual operation or method into the basic motions required to perform it and assigns to each motion a predetermined time which is determined by the nature of the motion and the conditions under which it is made. So, we will see in the subsequent slides that different levels are there that is it is determined the time standard is determined by the nature of the motion. For example, the nature of the motion can be smooth, it can be accelerated, deaccelerated. So, depending upon the nature of the motion, different levels or different time estimates are there as well as the conditions under which it is being done. If I walk leisurely from this podium to the other end of the studio, different time estimate may be there. If I run different time estimate will be there. So, the conditions are different. If I am moving from this place to that place carrying a heavy load of 50 kgs with me, the conditions are different. Now, depending upon the conditions, the time standards are there, there is a tabular form of data available. So, based on the nature of the work, based, based upon the conditions under which the work is being done, we will accordingly choose the time estimates for the various basic motions which comprise or which add up or build up into the complete task or the job. Now, method time measurement, let us see the introduction. The basic concept is now I think clear that we are not going to use a stopwatch here. We are uh, time study analyst or we are not going to go to the shop floor to observe whether the worker is working or not working, whether the machine is working or idle as we do in work sampling. So, here what we will do? We will divide the overall work into the basic motions and for those motions try to look for the data which is already available or predetermined data we will try to use to set the time step. Standard. Now, that is the basic introduction. Let us try to understand the other important aspects related to the method time measurement. So, method time measurements is one of the major predetermined motion time system. The objective of MTM is the establishment of the tangible number 1 
अंडरस्टैंडेबल नंबर टू एक्सेप्टेबल डेटा नंबर थ्री फॉर द साइंटिफिक मेजरमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमन कंफर्ट और वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट ह्यूमन एफर्ट इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका एंड प्रेजेंटली एग्जिस्ट इन सेवरल वेरिएशन सच एज एम टी एम वन एम टी एम टू एम टी एम थ्री एक्सेट्रा एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द प्रीवियस सेशन ऑलरेडी वी हैव सीन दैट एम टी एम वन दीज आर द वेरियस बेसिक बॉडी मोशन एम टी एम टू दीज आर द बेसिक मोशन एम टी एम थ्री दीज आर द बेसिक मोशन तो यू कैन रेफर बैक टू द डिस्कशन और प्रीवियस डिस्कशन एंड सी दैट हाउ एम टी एम इज बिल्ड अप सो वी हैव ट्राई टू इंट्रोड्यूस इट देयर ऑल्सो सो दीज डिफरेंट वेरिएशन ऑफ एम टी एम सिस्टम आर एप्लीकेबल ऑन डिफरेंट बिजनेस मॉडल्स नॉट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन एज वी हैव सीन दैट द बेसिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ एम टी एम सेज दैट we have to take into account the conditions under which the work is being done so depending upon the conditions depending upon the nature of work being done we have to take a decision that whether we are going to use mt mtm1 or mtm2 or mtm3 now mtm system gives values for the fundamental motions now what are these fundamental motions this can be reach which is one move turn grasp position apply pressure i travel disengage and release so there are different types of body motions or fundamental motions so mtm system gives values of the fundamental motion so these values we can take from the mtm system and then build up on the standard time required for performing the task which comprises of these fundamental motion the overall task has to be divided into these fundamental motion time has then to be noted down from the tables and then added up to get the overall time required for performing the task so the normal time if you can see that this is this requires a different time scale why because suppose there is a uh, you can say Uh, fundamental motion called release here now the, i am holding a pen i release it here how much time it has taken it has taken a fraction of a second so we need to devise a new time unit which we can use for these fundamental motions so the normal time values for mtm technique are given in time measure units t m u and 1 t m u is equal to 0.0001 r और 0.0006 मिनट और 0.036 सेकंड्स, विच आर रिप्रेजेंटेड इन द टेबुलर फॉर्म फॉर दीज फंडामेंटल मोशंस। सो वी कैन सी दैट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज अ डिफरेंट टाइम यूनिट फॉर डूइंग द एम टी एम मेजरमेंट और फॉर डूइंग द मेथड टाइम मेजरमेंट now there are different mtm versions which we have already covered maybe just an introductory aspect was discussed in the previous session so mtm1 is the most accurate and it provides the most detailed method description but requires the longest time for analysis so it is the most accurate but requires the longest time for analysis also it is the most detailed method description so we will use the very fundamental basic body motions and then try to find the time in the form of tmus mtm2 was developed by constructing motion combinations so here individual motions usually are taken into account so individual motions you have in mtm1 but here you can see motion combinations as we have seen in the form of a diagram in the previous session also from the basic motions of mtm1 so motion combinations from the basic motions of mtm1 so mtm1 we are using the basic motions here we are combining the basic motions and is its analysis can be done more quickly than mtm1 because the very fundamental basic motions we have now combined into maybe a set of two or three or four motions now mtm3 is the simplest of mtm system as is and is intended for the use with long cycle short run operations and speed of analysis is seven times faster seven times faster than mtm one so here again we go to the next higher level of analysis so in mtm1 we go to the most fundamental motions then we combine these motions to get a higher uh, level of 
combinations in MTM2 and MTM3 even we go to the highest level and then there are 7 times this method is 7 times faster as compared to the MTM1. So, this is again the representation of what we have covered in the previous slide MTM1 method time measurement 1 is based on 23 basic motions and consists of approximately 5000 time values approximately 5000. MTM2 is based on 9 basic motions. So, here you see there are 23 which have now some have been combined together and only 9 basic motions are there and it consists of 39 time values and MTM3 consists of 4 categories. So, from 23 to 9 to 4. So, 4 categories of manual motions and 10 times well time times 10 time values only. Now, what are these 4? We can see handle, transport, step and foot motion and bend uh, sorry bend and arise. So, these are the 4 uh, categories of most basic motions or the body motions which are taken into account in MTM 3. So, these are the 4 manual motions which are highlighted here. Then there are other MTM versions also like matter for MTM 5 for metal cutting operation or MTM C for clerical work because basically uh, what is our target? Our target is to identify the work for which we want to find out the standard time or the time required for performing the task at a desired level of performance using the standard method of course. So, depend it is not that always the work will be done on the shop floor only work is being done at all spheres of our life. So, I am today recording this session. So, this is also work being done. So, basically we need to find out the time required for performing the task it can be in a office space also. So, these are the different MTM versions. Now, the basic motions used in MTM 1 you are explained with the help of examples also one is reach, move, turn, apply pressure, grasp, position, release, disengage, eye travel, eye focus then leg and foot motions are also there. So, this is just an example reach, release, open hand then grab this is shown here then move grab and move and release. So, you can have different basic motions in MTM 1 which can be combined together added up together built up together to do the complete job or the work. Now, we will take one of them only maybe suppose we take reach and try to understand that how reach depends upon the nature of the work as well as the conditions under which the work is being done. Now, let us see to simplify recording individual MTM methods a system of MTM conventions has been developed for example, what is the convention regarding reach? Reach is the basic element used when the predominant purpose of the motion is to move the hand or fingers to a definite destination or to a general location. So, reach is you move your hand or fingers to a definite destination. For example, I am standing here I want to use the pen. So, reach will be my hand moves in this direction to the pen that I want to use. The next can be grasp. I have grasped this pen then I have moved this pen. So, we go to that basic motions of our body. The time for making a reach varies with the following factor which I have already told nature of condition will depend upon the nature of the destination. Now, suppose this is lying op op in open space here I have reached easily suppose it is lying underneath here. So, the condition has now changed and in order to reach this pen I have may have to bend down and then I have to reach to this pen. So, the condition or the nature of destination is important length of the motion is also important type of reach is also important whether the hands move accelerate deaccelerate at the beginning or the end of reach or not. So, whether it is a smooth mo motion or smooth reach motion or it is accelerated or deaccelerated. So, the conditions may change the type of or the nature of operation or the basic motion may be different depending upon the conditions. Now, there are 5 classes only for reach and if we go back just to look at the various basic motions you can see there is a long list of basic motions and we are only discussing one that is 
reach. So, only for reach there are 5 combinations possible. So, class A reach this is to an object in fixed location or to an object in other hand or on which other hand rests. So, maybe this is class A reach. Class E reach to indefinite location to get hand into position for body balance or next move or out of the way. So, even reach also we have so many different variants possible. Now, what is our role as a time study analyst? We have to first analyze the work and divide it into the various basic motions and for each basic motion then we have to look for the time in terms of TMUs that is time measurement units. So, this is only for reach and for others also there are sub classifications. So, there is tabular data available and we can look for the classifications. Now, this is just one example MTM this is giving a MTM 2 analysis sheet similar type of work can be done for MTM 1. So, in MTM 1 we have the basic motion elements here which is reach. Similarly, there are other basic motion elements some of them may have a sub classification, some of them may not have a sub classification, but then we have to see that what work we are doing and which basic motion element is satisfying or is correlating to the kind of work that we are doing the conditions of under which the work is being done. So, we have to first make this complete list that this is the sequence we are following this is the these are the various work element or the basic motion elements coming into the picture when we are performing this task and then we have to find out the time for each and every basic element. Now, here you can see this is for MTM 2, this is left hand description, this is right hand description. So, left hand get base from the box. So, this is left hand, the units are given, this is a symbol, this is the TMU, you can see TMUs. Similarly, right hand get pin from the box, G is given here. Then put base in on the bench. So, this is P A symbol is given, T M U's are given. So, then we can calculate the complete do the summation of all these T M U's and we can get that how many T M U's are being spent for performing this task. Now, what are the uses of uh, motion time measurement? It helps in developing effective methods and plans in advance of beginning the production. So, if you compare this with the stopwatch time study or work sampling in both cases the work has to be in progress then only we can do the analysis then only we can use our stopwatch to find the time. But here we can do the calculations before the production actually starts and all our planning may depend upon this these time estimates only. So, it can help us in developing effective methods and plans in advance of beginning the production. It can also help in improving the existing method. So, we can compare two or three different alternatives of doing the same work and then we can select the best method which is giving us the desired results, but with the minimum time. It helps in establishing the time standard cost estimation because we can very easily now calculate the amount of work being done by the worker, how much work has to be assigned to a worker, what is the salary to be paid to the worker based on the work he or she is doing. So, the cost estimation can be done. Training supervisors to become method conscious, research in the areas like operating methods, performance rating etcetera. So, there are certain examples so we can discuss each one of these in detail, but maybe because of the paucity of time we will shift to the next important topic that we want to cover that is the Maynard operation sequence technique which is most commonly known as most, most commonly known as most. So, the important point here is that there is literature available in books available, chapters available and if you understand the basic concept of MTM you can refer to the books and you will be very easily able to understand the concept and very easily able to understand the other basic motions also. And you can take certain examples which can be asked in the assignment also, which can be asked in the examination also. You can try to find out the times using the MTM 
method. Now, let us see what is most. Now, HB Maynard and company has introduced most system and this new system was brought into practice in the United States in 1975. It has gained a wide recognition as a major contribution to the body of industrial engineering, one of the important topics that is taught in industrial engineering. And here the standard in this diagram if you just if you can decipher what is given in the diagram, the standard will depend upon the type of activities, the variation in the conditions, the frequency and the length of the cycle. So, these are some of the parameters which will govern or which may classify the various techniques that fall under most or the various variants that we consider under most. Now, what can be the difference? Now, we are discussing MTM. Now, in MTM how it is different from most which is explained here. So, the MTM basically you can see are the elements are stand alone. If you see we have see taken the basic elements then combined them into the form of MTM2. So, in MTM the basic elements are stand alone and do not relate to the sequence of the operation. So, we, we take the elements we divide the overall work into the various elements and then for those elements we write down the TMUs. In most you can see the complete sequence of the operation very very important this is most complete sequence of the operation which consists of smaller elements is addressed. So, we focus on a sequence in case of most whereas, in MTM we focused on the basic or the fundamental elements or the fundamental basic elements. Now, let us see what is what do we know about most this technique sorry this technique has a wide application and can be successfully applied in all industries ranging from shipbuilding to electronics to automobile to textile. So, wherever the work is being done or the manual work is being done the technique of most can be easily applied. Application have been made in offices, assembly shops, materials handling, maintenance and other such operations. So, this is the application. Why most? it is much faster than the traditional time study techniques. For example, the basic most is 40 times faster than MTM 1, 40 times significant which is very very significant 40 times faster than MTM 1. Accuracy of up to 95 percent can be obtained and it requires less documentation. We will take one example the different levels of most which I have already uh, highlighted. So, basic most for the activities between 20 second to 2 minute, mini most for the activities shorter than 20 second and maximum for the activities above 2 minutes. So, we can have uh, variants of most also. Now, this is one sequence model which is followed in most most very very important. So, we can see activity can be a general move, it can be a controlled move, it can be a use of tool. So, how what is a general or the standard sequence model we will follow you can see here A what do you mean by A? A means action distance, B means body motion, G means gain control and then A again is coming, B is coming again and P is coming P is placement is coming again. So, this is a standard sequence model that we have to follow that is A, B, G, A, B, P and then again may be A. So, we will divide the work being done into these sequence models and if something may be for a particular uh, sequence of work somewhere we find that body motion is not happening. So, therefore, there we can give the value 0 to the body motion. Similarly, for a controlled move this is the sequence model A same, B same, G same, then M move controlled, X process time, I alignment and then A, B, G, M, X, I. So, similarly the sequence will be followed. Then if we are using a tool this can be the sequence model A, B, G, A, B, P and then A, B, P. So, we can see that there is a place here. So, accordingly we can choose that what we are doing if we are using a 
tool so we can very easily now using the sequence or the standard sequence we can identify that how the work is being done for example if a person is on the ground floor and he has to move to the first floor and fetch his charger which is located there which is being put into the uh, place or char charging socket so he has to go from the ground floor climb up the stairs move to the room take out or take control of the charger come down to his room and again put it in the socket and the start the charging so this is maybe we have to see that what are the various sequence maybe here you can see action distance will come into picture body motion will come into picture gain control will come into picture placement will come into picture so we will see that which type of the activity and which type of sequence model is relevant to this example where a person goes from first floor uh, go, fr sorry from the ground floor to the first floor to bring his charger and accordingly depending upon the distance he is moving depending upon the steps he is climbing depending upon the way he is uh, gaining the control whether he has to search for the charger or it is already placed in the socket depending upon the conditions and the nature of work we will follow a sequence model and try to find out that how much time will be taken using this technique of most now this is you can see describe activity 1 standard sequence abg abpa similarly describe activity 2 we have to give the value of x we have to note down and based on the value of x we, we this is the frequency coming into picture then the tmu values maybe suppose we get tmu 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 and then we will add up this all TMU values and these TMU values then will help us to find out the time because these are the time measurement units. So, we will be able to find out the time required for this uh, activity or this work or this task or this job which we have divided into the basic motions and those motions are in a particular sequence especially in case of most whereas in case of MTM these will be taken as individual motions. So, what are the applications of most? This technique finds its application for method improvement. We can see that we can compare two or three different alternatives and choose the best alternative based on the results of most. It helps to establish the standards and also for determining the production delays and labor performance index. So, most of the outcomes of the work measurement techniques are more or less same that we need to decide that what must be the best way of performing the task or if we have four or five alternatives at, at hand which one is going to be helpful for us helpful for the workers helpful for the organization in terms of consuming less time less human effort less energy while delivering the objective or the goals for which the work is being done or the method is being used. So, with this we conclude our session on introduction to MTM and most. In our next session we will start our discussion related to the topic of ergonomics. But one thing I would like to suggest that we have not been able to cover the topic in the detail in which I would have liked to, but still I think the introduction part is clear and based on this introduction I will urge all of you, I will request all of you to please look at different books and try to solve one or two problems related to most as well as related to MTM. Thank you.